Our camera in place is more um, for people, for prosumers, and, but also for professional people who maybe have the demand to have several of these 360 cameras and shoot at different um, uh, places at the same yeah. time or, or do live streaming with five different cameras at one place. Um, it, it makes things firstly more easier and also more um, accessible. Welcome to Cinema 5D on the go. Moving conversations about moving images with filmmakers and industry leaders. Brought to you by Tilta, G Technology, Manfrotto, and Olympus OMD, in association with Sony. This is your host, Nino Leitner. Yeah. Do you think in the future, I mean, what I find interesting that all these cameras, of course, are Basically, I mean, even this, I mean, this is in one form factor. Up until now, we had, as we said, except for the Ozo, most of them were just a couple of other normal cameras right. put together, often GoPros because they're small. Mm. Um, but uh, do you see at some point in the future, like, really a camera, like, with, you know, like, one sensor that is really made for 360 capturing, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? I don't know if it's even possible in terms of lenses. Right. But is it is there something that is, you know, something that is a possibility, like uh, you know, one kind of 360 lens and sensor in a way? Uh, it might be possible, but um, it's also I think it's a lot. So so our our lens, for example, they capture 200 degrees um, yeah. horse, um, vertical, mm. um, and. You will see, I think, in terms of the, the stitching technology is, I think, key for, for all of this. Um, yeah. Um, I'm not sure about one lens, how, how it would actually perform, um, and it would be a super huge fish eye lens. Um, exactly, yeah. That, well, that, well, if the sensor size changes, you would also need to right. have a lens that com is completely different from anything we've right, seen so right, far. Right, right. Um, well, I mean, I, I kind of get what you're going at, Nino, right? It's because when you have eight different individual yeah. sensors, they're not as good right. as having two bigger yeah. sensors, and right? So, right? That's right, it right, in right. a nutshell right yeah. there, yeah. Right, right. So it's great that it's in, you know, one form factor, but uh, you're making trade-offs for being able to fit that many cameras that's right, that's in right. a single body. Yeah. Right? Right. And the trade-off comes in the form of, obviously, the look that's coming out of the camera, the visuals. Sure, so. sure. Sure. Yeah, I don't even know if people even thought about this yet because everything is so centered around the mm. kind of camera technology we have. Mm. Um, you know, maybe there is some kind of completely new camera mm. that is only with this dedicated purpose in the future. Sure. Because all the sensors that are being made are rectangular mm. in different sizes, but you know, maybe there's like a really like a, a loop and like a right, loop yeah. sensor in like a way. A, yeah. a one millimeter, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Something. Yeah, yeah. yeah. well, I mean, be interesting, definitely. I yeah. like that this works more or less out of the box, right, Max? Right, I mean, right. you can take this out and plug it in and go. Exactly. In a way that you can't with a lot of those large rigs where you're connecting, you know, eight Canon C500s or eight right. Red Epics, right. you know. Yeah, and, and you know, I also talked with aerial photographers, and, and they said what is super interesting for them that it also has a direct HDMI out, um, a stitched image coming out of HDMI. So you could even like live stream from a drone if you would connect it with third-party tools to your light bridge or cool. yeah. a downlink system. Yeah. Have you put this on a drone yet? Uh, our team in China has already tested it. Yeah. Giving that a shot? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, yeah, I mean, uh, so there's a lot of VR stuff still coming out. I think last year was the first big, I mean, this was the buzzword last year for yeah. sure. Uh, but I think it will be again this year. And, mm. uh, in general, I mean, every trade show. Uh, yeah, I, th I think, I mean, prices are definitely coming mm. down. You're, you guys are definitely, I think, a price breaker in that sense. Right. I mean, <laughs> right, right. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think, uh, is there, you know, where do you see the competition right now? Right. Um, I think in, in the professional space, it's really, you know, you have these customized rigs, like I, I've just come from a VRLA, and you see that um, big, uh, customize for red rigs and stuff. This is, I think, this is something that is more really for people who, who have the highest demands and, and who have the budget, who don't really care about, you know, um, our budget at all. So, um, where our camera in place is more um, for people, for prosumers, and, but also for professional people who maybe have the demand to have several of these 360 cameras and shoot at different. Um, uh, places at the same yeah. time or, or do live streaming with five different cameras at one place. Um, it, it makes things 
diversity, more easier, and also more um, accessible. I always wondered, I never worked with such a huge rig like a red rig, but I always wondered because it becomes so big. Mm. Are you completely limiting yourself in terms of where you can put that rig? Because inside a room, it would just fill up half of the room. Right, right. And at the same time, there's a really big uh, post-production process um, connected with it, right? Yeah, of so, course. Yeah. I mean, so I think, in the, especially in the United States, we're seeing these organizations like CNN and Vice doing these more story-driven right. uh, 360 video projects in the middle of like refugee camps. Even the New York the, Times, yeah. right? In right. New York Times, in the middle of like breaking news situations, mm. and for something like this Insta 360, it feels more like you can put this in a suitcase, be in the middle of a riot or something exactly. in a city, and you can actually capture that versus eight Red Epic weapons or whatever yeah, exactly. mounting that, right, you right, know. Right. And, and one, this is, this is also inconspicuous, too. So I do see it as being a pretty good documentary option Definitely. for, uh, for yeah. 360 video. Right, so, so one of our, um, so we gave it to National Geographic and they shot a really cool video in, in Hawaii. That's also on our YouTube channel if you want to guys check that out. Um, yeah, and you're totally right. I think documentary filmmakers, um, media who want to broadcast, um, and also uh, we are production companies. Um, and like um, broadcasters, uh, this, this camera is, is definitely uh, very interesting. Yeah. Awesome. So we talked about a lot of things. We actually haven't mentioned the price and right. the availability. <laughs> right. So um, we started pre-orders uh, last Friday, um, both from our online shop on our website insta360.com, but also um, with several retailers, including B and H, Price Electronic. Great. Um, and we will start shipping mid-May on yeah. the first batch of cameras um, and keep the production running. Cool. Are you, uh, do you have a retailer in Europe as well? Yes, we have. Um, in Germany, it's Solectric. Um, it's like our main distributor and it will also be um, available, I guess, maybe not in media markets, but uh, in um, selected retail shops, definitely. You can also check our website. Yeah. Awesome. So the price point is at 3,499 US dollars. Um, it comes with the camera, with a case, and also um, a second battery. And the software as well? Uh, the software is included, yeah. Awesome. Right. Cool. Well, thanks for being on this ride with Thank us. Thank you so much. And um, <laughs> yeah, thanks everybody for watching this episode of On The Go. There is more coming soon, and um, stay tuned to Cinema 5D and tune in for the next episode next week. Thanks for watching.